Nice chat, and we, we volleyed around some ideas of how to clean up my street. My street has a very big drug problem and alcohol problem and crime problem. And she was actually, and I, I described how the trees, these trees had been there and it darkens that whole area and it makes it a playground for anybody that wants to deal drugs. And it's a dark part of a parking lot. And this uh, woman uh, hooked me up by giving me the names of different uh, groups that are green, what I call the greenies, uh, environmentalists and tree huggers and, and the like. And I emailed them and called them. And so um, I am awaiting to hear from them. So if I have the green police, maybe we won't have to have the Medford police down my street. The Green Police. So let me start it again. It's uh, 802 on the first day of summer. It is. Okay. June 21 and visual radio. We're a couple of minutes behind because we had a big celebration here tonight. Uh, we send our fond farewell to Joe LaRocca of the wonderful show. He's moving on to teach film, which he's very good at. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so uh, you may talk. Oh, I may talk. Hello, Rob. Uh, what do I talk about? Well, anyway, so Would I... Would you like to be on the air? Bill Bridges on the air and right now. that same woman um, and I are going to have uh, an, uh, an ice cream together at an ice cream shop in Medford Square on Tuesday. So it's wonderful to be bridging the gaps, building bridges, coming together, sharing text, resources. No. All right. Um, and, um, I'll call you tomorrow. All right. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Yep, so. And it all came about because I wrote a blog and I put out what my what I needed for my street and my community, and I got a, a great response. And she put the blog on patch. I put the blog on patch. Now, does Winchester have a patch? I think there is a Winchester. Yes, because a Daniel Morrow was running it, um, and he's no longer um, running that one. He might be running another one. AOL has these patches, but let me just say who that was. That was Rob Forboni. He won a Grammy with Keith Richards of the Rolling Stones. Okay for uh, the Timeless album. They did a track on the Timeless Hank Williams tribute. And Rob uh, is a producer of uh, tracks on Bridges to Babylon by the Rolling Stones. Keith Richards introduced me to Rob. Oh. In 1988, I was at a Keith Richards. Uh, I used to manage the producer of the Rolling Stones, Jimmy Miller. Okay. We were business partners. Uh, manager is not the correct word. Um, he was unmanageable but in a good way. He was creative. <laughs> But we were business partners, and so um, he brought me to Talk Is Cheap, the Keith Richards album, Session. Mm -hmm. So I'm in there with Keith Richards of the Rolling Stones, which is a magic moment in my life, you know? Mm -hmm. And Keith goes, you have to meet Rob Forboni, you know, uh, Joe, this is Rob Forboni. And what, that was 1988, 98, 2008. So for 24 years, Rob and I have been friends ever since Keith introduced us. Mm. Is that amazing? It is. So Rob is in the studio right now in New York. And uh, a friend of mine has a reggae act, and I said, I want Rob to produce it. Rob did all the Bob Marley remastering. Oh, wow. He was the vice president of Island Records, which had Bob Marley stuff and Traffic and mm -hmm. Spooky Tooth. and So uh, it's, it's fun, but Rob, I, I, I put messages out there. Hey, call in tonight, and Rob calls on this phone. He didn't want to be on the air because he's in the studio making a record. It's great. Uh, yeah, that's good. He's been very busy. He's down in Texas recording a record. He was... Um, it's cool. Um, we're just having, this is just media fun. Mm -hmm. But now with the power of the blog that you're on patch with it the It is blog, very powerful. It is very powerful. It's you saw what I did with my blog. I got it into the Medford Mercury. Yes, you did. Yes, you and did. The editor w liked where I was going with that. And Stephanie Burke was in front of me, who's then at the council. She was sitting across from you. She was in front of yes. me. And I showed her the article and she goes, I want more people here at the council. So Good. Good, yeah. good, good, good. I do too. I, I, you know, I put out that challenge, you know, uh, when you put yourself out there, I'm glad we brought, brought that up because when you put yourself out there, there is, it is so easy to sit behind and hide behind a computer and criticize somebody else that's taking a step forward. And, uh, you know, I Any want step in the right direction. Any step forward to, uh, you know, and advocate for whatever. And, and if uh, I have the right to advocate for what I believe in, and somebody else has the ad, uh, right to advocate for what they want to advocate for. And uh, I'm only one of 56,000 people, uh, but my, my voice is so loud because nobody else uh, will, will speak up. Uh, there are some that, that will speak up and, and advocate for their beliefs, 
but it's it's much easier to just stay at home on the couch and criticize uh, you let know. me ask you this we met at the City Council of Medford yes we did and you you came up to me because you had just gotten Verizon yes I was so happy I love Verizon by the way is that why you started coming to the council because yes. you couldn't see council meetings right because I used to sit in I was one of those people that used to sit and so that's good because mm -hmm. now here you are on TV mm -hmm. and the blog on patch and then getting it into the ink edition and then getting here on um, did I give you a copy of that of what the uh, the the article? No, but I, well, you sent it to me. I, I have. I can give you the Mercury if you want to have extra copies. Oh no, I'm they give you five copies. Oh, okay. When you so when you print an article, they give you five copies. Today, I, I asked the woman, "Can I have the Malden paper just to see it?" And there it was. I was in the Malden paper too. Oh really? Oh, Sometimes they cross because if they feel it's good enough, you know, Malden being yeah. on the border, yeah, they make that judgment. Sometimes articles are missing mm -hmm. for both papers mm -hmm. but they say this is good for both cities mm -hmm. so that that was a I go oh, yeah give me two Malden and three Medford because you get five free mm -hmm. for writing for them you know mm -hmm. and you know when I bought a couple extra on the stand and you know and you know like John Storella he liked yes the article but we're preaching to the choir because John Storella is is up there and he talks facts and figures. I love John. Now, I don't always agree with him, but I love that he does his homework, and I love that he steps forward, you know? We're never going to agree with everyone. That's right. Um, that's what life is about. And sometimes when you have opposing point of views, if you can, uh, in an adult fashion, talk about them, mm -hmm. you'll have progress and you'll have a better product, whatever that product is. And there is a middle ground. And Medford is in a shambles, though. On I'm many quoting levels. someone. I'm quoting someone that I talked to last night that said Medford's in a shambles. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's falling apart in different ways. I'm on Central Ave today, and again, crosswalks, and, and I'm identifying. I, I, I should be writing them all down to tell the council this crosswalk, that crosswalk, at least bringing it out. Mm -hmm. People are watching. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. they'll make that email or they'll make that phone call. Mm -hmm. They certainly, I don't think, want to come up to the council chambers. No, I know. And, and you wonder why that is. I mean, Well, I, I know why do. that is. I mean, look at the way, I, really, I've been abused by the council president with his gavel. And, you know, you stand up to them. And then, you know, he was very cordial to me Tuesday night. Oh, good. I'm yeah, glad. Well, at a certain point, I'm glad. you know, I, I know people in the community have been talking to him and saying, what you did to Joe was not fair. And he's been getting a lot of flack for what he did when he wouldn't let me speak. Oh, okay. So he's getting flack, and it's coming back to me that he's getting flack. I actually think that the city council is one of the only places where that Medford can blow off steam. And uh, that is what they said to him. It's a First Amendment yes, right. Yes. Let him on the air. Unfortunately. Marco, you can come on the air if you want. Hello. Oh, hello. Hi. <laughs> So, um, you know, it's one of the only avenues that we have to, to get our, to blow off steam for the city, uh, And get things done. Yeah. And um, we do get things done. Oh, we do. We do. We're making a difference. They, um, they fixed my potholes on my street, my second immediately. speech. No, well, the, the, immediately after the second speech, when I spoke alone on it, nothing. Yeah. When Brianna Lungo Kern, the councilor, spoke, and I got up and asked about my street and uh, the crosswalk, Done. Mm -hmm. God bless them. But you know, hey, two two is not bad. Mm -hmm. Going up mm -hmm. twice and asking mm -hmm. immediately. The next day at noon, they were they were fixing the potholes. Now I just read a whole volley on the patch about the uh, busing. Um, uh, it's it's a uh, busing uh, problem. We have in Medford a huge problem. We have the school budget, and it's not uh, enough to level fund because there are contractual agreements with teachers and, and everybody else involved. And so they have to find other places in the budget to cut. And one of the things that they were talking about is that we send our students sometimes to Lexington, to the Minuteman. Have you heard about that? I got through- I've been hearing things. Yes. So they've, they've been saying maybe give them a T pass or something or, or have one commuter bus that stops in Medford Square and takes them all or something. They're trying to find a cheaper way of transporting them to Minuteman. First of all, I think it's sad because we have a great vocational uh, school in Medford. I know so many of my, my own relatives that have gone to the Medford's vocational school. Um, I, and they've become mechanics and successful, own their own businesses and whatnot. But I think it's on the higher level technology of um, 
which involves actually the Channel 3 issues. I think a lot of it has to do with the, you know, more computer and, and you know, more uh, that kind of thing, I think, is what's missing. Because it, th if you don't provide it at Medford, they're allowed to try to uh, get into the Minuteman. Well, that would be the um, high school channel. That's what I'm saying. The high school channel is separate yes. from TV3. Yes. And separate from the government channel. There's yes. three. And they're operated separately. But what is this high school channel? We don't even have a name for it. We, we have don't. A channel 15? We call it Channel 15. Now, here at Winkham, they operate all three out of here. But uh, I think for a high school, boy, if I had TV at my high school, mm -hmm. I mean, when I left Arlington High, which was a long time ago, <laughs> uh, when I graduated yeah. there, um, I went to film and journalism at Suffolk University. Oh, okay. All right, so, uh, and that's what I do today, film and journal journalism. Mm -hmm. um, but um, Arlington got a cable radio show over the cable station. Oh, okay. WAHS, Arlington High School, something like that. Okay. So this is fun stuff that I never got to enjoy. In fact, I went to the school years later, 10 years later, they had computers. We didn't have any, I didn't know what a computer was back in No, you wouldn't have. No. And I think it's the computer component. I'm, I'm not sure. Don't quote me. Because I know that they have an excellent um, HVAC program at Medford High, you know, uh, air conditioning and all of that stuff. They have auto mechanic. They, they, they're very, very successful. People can go to the VOC and in those trades, get out of the VOC and get a job. I've seen it happen over and over again. But for some reason, if, if they don't fill that need, they can go to another community. They have contracts with Lexington Minuteman. So there's something that Minuteman is offering that Medford is not. And it's costing us to send them over to Minuteman, number one. And number two, the transportation piece of it I is where they wanted to cut back. Well, the volley of um, uh, parents talking on the pet Medford patch, it, I was exhausted, emotionally drained after reading just, you know, the back and forth, back and forth over all of those issues. It, it's, um, the patch is really coming into its own, and I know that they're proactive in getting people to talk. So um, I wish the Medford transcript, would, the transcript has gotten weird where I bought the paper today, I rarely buy it, but it's two bucks. Mm -hmm. It and, is. And it's too much. So I bought it, but the Antonio has a, 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 an excellent. Uh, it looks really good in the paper. Do you know about it? He's, no. I think he sent it to us. He sent it to me. Oh, okay. Uh, this lengthy uh, essay about Medford and. Did he write the essay? He he wrote the essay. Oh, good for him. Sent it to me last week, and I, I see a Tom Thorndycraft sighting. A Navy guy is in the audience. And if he was, audience. if he's willing to come up and share the the seat with us, we got a camera. We got a he's mic. He's willing. Um, we can talk about the Beatles or, or the Titanic. Everyone's invited in the pool. Or the Titanic, sir. The pool that is public All right. access TV. This is public access, buddy. And um, the Titanic and the place out in Western Mass. You can give it. Tom this mic. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, thank you. Good morning, good morning. Thank, and I'm thank going you very to afternoon. do another camera angle. That's right. All you got to do is put that on your shirt. You, put you, two on you don't there. have to put this on. You can lay it right there. Okay, I'm going to produce this. Oh, that's wonderful. So this is Tom. I met Tom out in the green room, which means the hallway in this place. <laughs> <laughs> hallway. The waiting room. The waiting room. Yes. What are you waiting for? I I'm waiting know. for something green, is what I'm doing. That's right. That's right. So now, where do, are you Irish, sir? Yeah, I'm hint, hint of an accent of some sort. Uh, no, I'm just... I'm not from this area. So oh, that's what it is. <laughs> that's, that's where the non-accent came into <laughs> okay. the place. Non yeah, that's right. I parked the car, I know. So um, anyway, we were talking earlier about the Titanic um, Museum in um, Western Mass, was it? Yeah, I think it's near Springfield. Springfield, yeah, that's Western Mass, yeah. Yep. Yeah, now, and they, they have a bunch of relics from the actual Titanic? I believe they do. I haven't, I haven't been there myself, mm -hmm. but I believe they do, yeah. I think I've seen it online a few times. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so now you are part of the Winchester Community Access, and you live in Stoneham. That's correct, correct. yep. All right. Mm -hmm. And you have also uh, filmed some of the selectmen meetings, you were telling me? That's correct. Mm -hmm. And a few school committee. All right. And uh, uh, jack of all trades, so to speak. All right. 
because and I heard you're good in computers. I've heard that too. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> That's good. Because um, one of the things that I was saying to Tom before the meeting was that uh, before the the TV show was that I would like to get our government access channel to you to be more open and transparent to have any and all all the only one that's open is the city council meeting and I think that we have open meetings and I attend them financial uh, meetings committee of the holes even on things like housing public safety park uh, off street parking uh, they have all of these open meetings but then mm -hmm. none of them are shown on the government access channel and one of the things that I would like to see done in my city, Medford, is to have those videotaped and put up on uh, the community, uh, not the community access, the government access channel. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how to get that done, but I did put a call out to the community through a blog, and I asked a lot of the uh, middle class professional people in Medford to look into that and how to do it because I'm, I'm not literate in how to uh, do the oversight piece, but I would like to have it done. So I, I uh, oh, the sound is going. We're having an echo problem. But anyway, so that's one of my goals in Medford is to have more open access on the government channel. Excellent. And to create a new high school channel, one that in, uh, gives the kids more of an education in media. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's being maximized. I just don't get the sense that it's maximized. When I watch my channel, what we call Channel 15, which is the high school channel, there's very little on it. So I want to figure out how to maximize that. Sure. And um, let me see, what else is there to talk about? I'm looking for Joe, and Joe's doing the technical support. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, you like the Beatles. I, I do. Like I said, I, I've been to England. Um, I went to Liverpool um, and I saw the Beatles Museum and you know paraphernalia and clothing that they had and Liverpool was a really cool city. It was a port city, it was yep. a gritty city, had a pub on every corner. It was a great, great experience to go and to And we Liverpool. missed Ringo Tuesday night. Uh oh, where was he? He was at the Harbor Lights thing. See now all three of us are here. I was Yay. just checking the audio. I brought the audio up in there and you got the echo. Yep. Not as bad as the Medford City Council, which they had a horrible echo problem two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, but, but the Beatles, Beatles. Um, yes. Ringo was here. He's on tour with his All-Stars. Yep. Um, I've been so busy, I haven't even looked at concerts. There was a uh, government mule, I guess, was up in Hampton Beach Casino. I'm not into that Allman Brothers kind of spinoff bands. But still... Um, there are things happening. So I'm thinking of a Chevalier series, Tom, in Medford in September. Uh, bring in some oldies, some reggae, some hard rock. Mix it up. Just bring that room alive. Sure. What halls do we have around here? We have a hall in this high school. There's an auditorium. Yeah. There's a great auditorium up in uh, Merrimack. I was actually videotaping up there Saturday night. In Merrimack, uh, New Hampshire, Saturday. Not Merrimack, New Hampshire. Merrimack College. Up in Haverhill area, Andover? No, 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 no. Lawrence, Eagle Tribune. Okay, yeah, that's whatever, Lawrence. Right there. Yeah, Eagle so Tribune. So there was the uh, Merrimack College, not the Andover, I don't know. Uh, up around there, Saturday night, but beautiful auditorium. Uh, there's a lot of auditoriums in these schools that could be utilized for mm -hmm. concerts. Mm -hmm. More Beatles. More Beatles. That's right. More Beatles. Now, so there's a Beatles spin-off, whatever you, imitation group that you're going to be able to get to come to? No, no, to. no. We're going to get artists, serious artists to do Beatles songs. Oh, oh, okay. So it's not like Beatlemania or something? Like no. Uh, it might be one of those groups. I'm, I'm going to have okay. to go look at um, there's Danbury Fields Forever, people. So that's what's happening in Connecticut. And the promoter wants to bring it up here. And I'm saying, why not Medford? He loves the idea. Oh, yeah. We have a fantastic auditorium. And a, uh, the doesn't want to do it in the auditorium. wants to do it in the Field of Dreams. Really? Well, there's no seats. You'd have to just mill around. Okay. Or sit on the grass. Do you know I haven't even mm. been up to the Field of Dreams? I have to make, make my way up there. So, you know, it's an interesting, interesting uh So he wants idea. to do an outdoor concert. Yeah. Condon Shell on the Mystic River. Oh, that's a fantastic venue for that. But we want That's designed for concerts. I know. Uh, but you want to see a few more people than what could fit along that narrow strip, uh, 400 people maybe? Yeah, but I mean, like... 
like with anything. I mean, they do the same thing with the Esplanade, and there are millions of people that show up. It's not designed to have millions of people show up, After but it happens. Taping, I went to the Saturday Night Concert with Mickey Thomas Starship. Mm -hmm. It was a weak turnout, maybe four or 5,000 people, which usually you're going to see 10, 15, 20,000 or more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, Mickey Thomas, he put on a professional act. Nothing's going to stop us now. Way off key, Joe. Um, but nothing's going to stop us now from the film Mannequin and mm -hmm. from Mannequin 2. Mm -hmm. Song so nice they used it twice. <laughs> uh, so, what's your favorite Beatles song? Strawberry Fields for Oh, I went to a, <laughs> a laser show. I went to a Beatles laser show. That was wild. Where? At the uh, Science Auditorium, you know, the. Um, oh, at the Hayes Planetarium. The Planetarium. It was back in high school, huh? It was a lot of fun. How about no. Cirque du Soleil? Is that still around with the Beatles thing? All, um, mm, don't know. Because that, that was very big. George Martin and his son did a soundtrack with new elements of Beatles songs, right. which was my next question to you. The Love soundtrack, All You Need Is Love, um, the Cirque du Soleil, they stripped down some of the old tracks, which is cool, the way we like it, and then they, they put out vocal harmonies and such. What do you think of dance house mixes of Beatles songs? I'm sure some mix masters have put them together already. Yeah. Do you think that's sacrilege? I do. Oh, okay. All right. Why? Yep. Hmm? Leave it alone. Leave it pure. Leave it, leave pure. it alone. I mean, yeah. even here's here's my here's my theory on on that. Uh, well, on should I say remastered? I don't trust remastered songs. I don't care if they're Beatles or not. Remastered. Okay, what did you do? Did you increase the treble? Did you uh, decrease the bass? Did you add another instrument in the background? Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The old, but, the but 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 the only person I would trust in that for remastering would be George Martin and his son. I'll give you pros and cons. Go ahead. Now George Martin produced the band America. Yep. He went back and did a greatest hits album for them, and he remixed "Horse with No Name" and the three That's America, yeah. yeah four hits mm -hmm. they had before he joined and did "Sister Golden" here. Yeah. So. Oh, is that Johnny? We got a phone call. Yeah. Um, we won't answer right now. We'll okay. Call him later, because we're in the middle of this discussion. Okay. So. Um, well, maybe he wants to chime in on this discussion. No, he's not watching because he says we're not up on the air. Oh, all right. What was I saying about the... The horse with no name. Ho yeah, so the America stuff he remixed. It's nice to have different mixes, but it's not as good as the original. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not only because I knew the original, but I just liked what was done with those records. Those records sounded good. Yep. Um, now, the Beatles and the remastering... Um, he's going to keep calling. Yeah, so uh, pick him up. Hello? Hi, Joe. Hey, John, when we don't pick up the first time, we're sending you a message that we're involved in a conversation. Oh, I didn't know that. I know, so you would have run 500 times, right? Hey, John. How are you? I'm doing good, buddy. Pretty good. Hey, uh... I'm going to call you back, okay? Okay, bye. I will call you back. Oh, there you go. He's funny. But we treat him with respect. That's right, he's lovely. Because he's our, he's our um, weekly guest. That's right. But uh, remastering this stuff... You're right. Now, the Bobby Hebb record, I was involved in the re-release of that on Uni. They did a terrific job. Bobby called me up and said, did they re remix my record? I said, sounds it, doesn't it? It's not a remix, Bobby. The artist, and he's one of the most musical people on the planet, mm -hmm. sounded like a remix to the artist. It sounded like a remix to me, but I listened. It was a, I said, that's remastering. They pulled the pianos out more. They did a magnificent job on Sunny, so sometimes it works and everyone's happy. Yep. Sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Now with the Beatles, you know people are buying the original vinyl, mm -hmm. the yep. original releases, they sure. want them sealed because they want it to sound like it sounded on those records, mm -hmm. which were great recordings. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they sold millions for a reason. They yep. were made great. Now, do you have an early Sgt. Pepper CD release? No, probably, um, probably somewhere. I bought it the day it came out yeah. on CD, and I bought yeah. it probably the album the day it came out, so that's one of my favorite records. Mm -hmm. The CD and the album are fine. I don't know what they've done since, because I 
haven't had a need to buy another CD. I keep using. Now, do you have an yeah. ear for the difference between a, a an album and LP and a CD a, and a CD? Absolutely. And you like the LP better, I'm sure. No, on the radio when they're doing these, because of all the uh, the high end gear they now have, when they play a record on a turntable day on ROR, yeah. you can hear the cracks too much. They're really pronounced. But in the old days, I could tell when they're playing a record or a CD. Mm -hmm. I could personally. Now, they had, as the in, technology improves, it in, improves too good because we're not dogs and cats. We don't have the, that kind of hearing. Yeah. <laughs> so they give us this technology. You know, Amy Mann records in 96K. To give you an example, a, a DAT machine is 44.1 or 44. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, she goes up to... Um, like I, I think it's 96 there's some increment there she goes to 96k well dogs can hear that and I said why would she do that why would she record at the highest mm -hmm. um, yeah. thing and um, the engineer said to me because for future technologies they've got it recorded in this higher oh, realm. Oh, that makes realm. sense they're already thinking in the future like yeah. that. That's right awesome. but then you got to go down if it's 96 44 goes up to 48 44.1 goes to oh 88.2 and then, so what is it, 44.1, and then I've even forgotten because oh, we well, stopped um, using Dax, but I knew this like the back of my hand, what, my God. Yeah. What, was, what was that Beatles song that they recorded, at, and at the end of the song it was uh, that only a dog could hear, what was that, Day in the Life? Was that a Day in oh, the I Life? Oh, I don't remember. I don't know. Yeah. But, you know, the point is why? People aren't going to hear it anyway. Yeah. You know, hidden Yeah, but, but in the future... It might come in handy. Well, no, you, because it's be just a gone. note. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know. Yeah. Um, they would write in grooves. Some record companies would put secret messages in the grooves. Mm -hmm. You know, on the master mm -hmm. stamper, you could mm -hmm. write. Um, the Elvis Costello label used to do that. But mastering is interesting because the kids today don't listen properly. They listen with earbuds. Yeah. And the records are manufactured for earbuds. Oh, really? The, you know, the records are now? I think the design okay. it's all that high end stuff that you're yeah. hearing in both speakers and Dunkin' Donuts and everywhere you go. Yeah. Yep. And it just sounds like shrill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no depth. No one cares about it. That we're just being force fed this garbage and I can't take it. Because I know what good <laughs> well I know what <laughs> Tom knows what what good stuff sounds like. Yeah, yeah. Well nice and rich. Yep. That's I know. Yep. I know, but that's relative. If you're a kid today, you you know, that's their thing of the day. Yeah, but they're not getting in our day, people were audiophiles. They wanted high-end this and high-end that, and they'd buy huge speakers, and you would have concert in your living room. You had quadraphonic sound where you could play with four. Oh, yeah. My, my sister had yeah. four speakers that were psychedelic and changed colors. Green, blue, red, and yellow. Now you've got 5.1 surround sound. Mm. Okay. So um, we'll get to Johnny in a second. So the mas remastering of these Beatles records is an interesting... I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of the remaster. I like the pure because what happens is I'm sitting in, whether I, it's not, it doesn't have to be the Beatles, a song that I like that I, that I remember a fond memory from when I was rollerblading or roller skating. I didn't rollerblade, I roller skated. And then they start out with the original and then they mix it. And, they, oh, yeah, yeah. and the kids today I've love the that. remix. They love it. Yeah. I get insulted. <laughs> yeah, so do I. <laughs> it's okay if you now, have both. Now, didn't they, didn't they do that on an American song? They may have. They do I it think to a so. lot of songs. Yeah, there was one song, and I was listening to it. I was in a d department store one time. I said, oh, okay, this is cool, America. Mm -hmm. You know, Horse mm -hmm. with No Name. Or yes, I love that song. Yep. Or something. Mm -hmm. right. What about colorizing movies? It's the same thing. Oh, same thing. Yeah. I don't like when they colorize the but movies. But see, I'm yeah. of a mind of, like, if you want the colorized and you're not used to the black and white, let the kids have it. Have fun with the media, as long as you have the original that you can go back to. Okay. All right. But I'm not a fan mm -hmm. of colorizing black and white movies. Now, there were some that were, like in 1939, they did have made in color movies and they were bad color, but they were. Oh, I thought they were spectacular. Well, you got Wizard of Oz and. Yeah, you know. some of them were spectacular. Yeah. yeah. But um, if it's made in black and white, I like to watch it in black and white. Was, I love uh, the shadows and the way that they use the lighting. Uh, that man from Texas, he would love that. Yeah, and we're going to talk to him in, in 15 minutes. Yep. Let's talk to Johnny Byers. All right, sounds like a plan. And um, we'll, we'll keep talking about Beatles remasters if you'd like. Um, this is a fun evening with Tom Thorndycraft.
Gene Martin, now John Byers. Hello, Joe. Hey, Johnny. How are you? Good. What's on your mind? Uh, nothing. I just thought I'd give you a call and see what's going on with the show. I, I, I can't get you on the internet, so... You didn't see Wonderful Show? What? You didn't see the Wonderful Show? Oh. Wow. The, the, the feed is down for some reason, but... Uh, we'll, we'll work on that. Thank you for alerting us. That's important. Yeah. Is there a Red Sox score? Yeah, right now they're, they're down 3 nothing to the uh, Marlins, which I'm not surprised considering they had that uh, insane run put out last night where they put 15 runs up, and that's usually what happens the next, the next game. The Sox either get no runs or a run or two, and they end up losing. Well, uh, have faith and be optimistic. Oh, yeah, uh, Joe, it's not that. It's the fact that I've seen this happen year in and year out. When when the Red Sox have a, a game like, like they had last night, they usually, and, and, and that's what hurts the next day's pitcher, because if I'm that pitcher, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be sitting in the, bo in the dugout or watching the game somewhere else other than the ballpark. Hey, guys, save some of that output for me. I need some of that output if I want to get a win. <laughs> True. So what are you up to, Johnny? It's hot out. You have air oh, I'm just sitting here trying to keep cool watching the ball game. I'm going to keep an eye to see whether the uh, the, the worst kept secret in sports uh, takes place tonight, which is King James finally gets his ring, or whether they force it to uh, back to Oklahoma for a seventh game, because if uh, Oklahoma wins tonight, then the series goes seven. No, if they win tonight... It's three to two, three to one right now, right? Right, but if but but see, but when if it, if it, if they win tonight, it goes to the sixth game. Right, but they, they, if Oklahoma wins tonight, this assures that there'll be a seventh game. I don't get the math. It's three to one. It's three to one. Oklahoma wins tonight. Miami has two shots to win it down in Oklahoma, and Oklahoma has only lost one game in the playoffs. Right, you're not doing the correct math. You're assuming they're going to win down in Oklahoma. You're assuming it's going to go seven. Well, no, they, they say right now, that, that's what I heard today, they say this game tonight, either Miami wins it and they win the championship, or the series goes back to Oklahoma and it's assured that it goes a seventh game. That's what no, they John, it's assured it goes to a sixth game. That's what the assurance is. Nothing is assured that it goes to a seventh. So uh, they, they, uh, they also say what you've been saying to me as of late. The NBA wants this to go seven, so they'll yeah. try to be uh, a way I to get it to go to seven. I mean, unless you have inside information that the refs are... Um, <laughs> well, that, that's the problem right now. Everybody thinks... Then it is assured. The bagging. The refs are bagging it. Well, you know, it, it, they're getting a lot of flack. Did you see the Manny? Can you say his last name for me? Manny Pac? Manny Ramirez. No, no, Pac Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao. And who did he fight? Bradley? Bradley. Okay. Is it Tim Bradley? Yeah, Tim Bradley. The same name as my editor here at Wincamp. Really? They overturned the boxing match. Well, Bradley I'm not surprised at that, that. I mean, that, that was... Won, but, but hadn't really won. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That happens all the time. Yeah, in boxing, and, and yeah. now there's a bit, you know, it's it's terrible. I, I just hate seeing someone throw a strike and they call it ball. Yeah. I hate when it's that blatant. Mm -hmm. Well, Joe, here's what, boxing, boxing has always been like that for the simple reason. It's, it, it, the fix is in in every fight. You never know, you as a fan, <laughs> never know who's going to win. All you know is that some way, somehow, there's going to be controversy, and, it's, it, and it just took this fight. To finally have something happen, where where um, where where they had to overturn a decision, and basically all that does happen now is that they these two guys are set up to rematch in November. So for until November, that title is going to be vacant unless they're going to give it back to Pacquiao and and make him the defending champion for that November fight, which I don't see them doing. They they would rather well, leave it vacant for a couple of months and just. Let's oh, it'll be vacant? No one's got it? Right. Well, the, the, that's one of two options. They either hand it back to Pacquiao. If they reverse the decision, there's one of two ways of doing it. They'll either hand it back to Pacquiao outright, or they'll vacate the title until November fight. And basically what will happen is 
the title will be up for grabs. No champion, no challenger. It will be two guys challenging each other to become the new champion. Johnny, we're going to um, move on, but I'm going to give them one John Byers story. You ready? Yeah. I was at a flea market in Davis Square Sunday. Okay. I bought for $5 an old life magazine that cost 35 cents. Great find, Jefferson Airplane on the front cover. Really? Really? Wow. I get in my car. Oh, and then they had a Marilyn Monroe one. They're there every Sunday. They have tons of life magazines and post, Saturday evening post. It's great. Mm -hmm. This flea market right near Obon Pan mm -hmm. in the parking lot uh, near Johnny D's. So, um... Oh, and I bought a James Bond one, the Ian Fleming story, with a fold-out Ian Fleming cover. Wow. wow. For five bucks, it's cheaper than eBay. Mm -hmm. But, Johnny, you were on the air with Butch Stearns on 850, getting in my car, and who's talking to me <laughs> over the radio but John... Oh, Peter. I tell you, Jeannie, Jeannie yes. that ball you gave me, I did go and have it... Um, appraised. Appraised. Wow. And, unfortunately, it was only worth $100. Allegedly, one of the, one of the autographs was not... A real autograph. Oh. And that's what... Well, I told you, go to um, no. Gary the Psychic Appraiser. Right. No, I know that. The guy the guy that I took it to said that every name except one was no good, and that's what brings the value down, because that one name, oh. could, a, a collector's item... But I don't believe it, John, because I remember that Star Trek episode where Captain Kirk had those glasses worth about 20 grand, hey. and the guy gives him $100, exactly what the guy appraised the that's ball That's right. Maybe mm -hmm. he wants to, to, yeah, that's to what get they do. Out of well, my, mother, my mother went with me, and, and uh, we didn't take the offer, and, right. and so the ball, the, the ball is still in my favor, and... We're Good. probably going to go get it appraised somewhere else. And well, Gary is on CAP Radio with a psychic appraisal. You should call him. Uh, I will do that. I gotta, right. we got to run. Two later. Bye-bye. I'm, oh, so I'm so glad you got it appraised. You there? Oh, he's gone. Oh, that's okay. all right. No, no. He, he went to, at least he, he's put an effort but in. But you are absolutely right. If, if that you Star see Trek guy, episode, remember it? Uh, the, the movie? Yep. Oh, the the where, where he had the, Yeah, where he had the glasses? Yeah. Let that that McCoy you. gave him? Can I talk about the ball? Yeah. Yes. Uh, this <laughs> the woman, McCoy game, right? I'm sorry. Um, this uh, woman that I know, she's 91 years old, and her husband owned a restaurant on the wharf. And all of the baseball players back in the day, it, the New York uh, Yankees came in and they would sign this ball. That's why it's legitimate. That's why it's, it's legitimate. It's got to be legitimate. I know the whole No one would forge it with. with Oh, but you're going to tell me names, yeah, these real names, names real, but this one's not. But this one's not. Please. And that's what they're trying to do is they're trying to get it out of him for 100 bucks so that they can sell it for 10000 or whatever it might be worth. Yeah. But you know what? I'm happy it's in his hands. Captain um, Kirk, is that a lot of money? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I've, I've, seen, that, I've yeah. seen that show on the, on the History Channel. Mm. Oh, really? Yes. You know what show I'm talking about? The, 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 the one about the, the, the no, no, the, uh, the shop in Las Vegas. Let's put it that way. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Um, on the history chain. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, the, the guys. Chum Lee. Yeah, Chum Lee. Yeah, 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 yeah that guy. Yeah, uh, yeah I've seen that. I've oh. seen that before. Yeah, and do they do the same thing? Do they? Yeah. Kind of? Yeah. Well, yeah. they're there to make money, you know, so they're going to. But but um, I love that show. That's I like all those shows. Yeah. Um, What's the name of that show? The, it's a pawn star. The pawn shop. The pawn star. Um. Johnny, and we were talking Beatles, and the autographs, the autographs. It just seems to me that, Yes, you know, why would you have six authentic autographs and then have somebody fill in another one? Now, WCAP Radio value. up in Lowell, Gary Summers does his psychic appraisals over the phone. But he, he's on Antiques Roadshow, okay. he's on CAP, he's an yeah. expert, he's a dear old friend of mine, and he's at the Record Expo in September. So I, I believe he's at that one. And he has like Spider-Man comics worth five grand. He knows what something's worth. Wow. You know? Wow. Mm -hmm. um, Beatles records have got to be, you know, the butcher cover. Oh, yeah. The butcher cover will always go up in value. That is a good collectible to have. Mm -hmm. hey, They're not going to find a vault of 50 more of them. You, you, think, you think he can appraise my uh, Jefferson Airplane? Oh, yeah. I'll email you his. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, sur Surrealistic Bellow in stereo, first release, first okay. press. Just in an LP form? Yes. Oh, my God. Jefferson Airplane, that's going to be worth money. Well, it depends. Uh, the airplane could have been much more valuable had they gone into a different direction. The Mickey Thomas Starship should never have joined the Starship. 
mm. because you took them in a direction off of what they were doing. Susan Guild is out there, and she's going to be on our show hopefully some week. All right. Um, the wonderful Susan Guild. It's like old home week here <laughs> tonight because of uh, the wonderful show and Joe LaRocca and Anthony. Um, but the um, I'm, I'll go off on my tangents here. What were we saying about Starship? Starship, yeah. Mickey Thomas brought it to Hard Rock, and the Jefferson Airplane and early Starship would have went into the Grateful Dead realm, where they mm -hmm. could have played and played and played. Yeah. And now they're playing to two, three hundred people, which is fine. They could have been playing to ten thousand people, and yeah. that Mickey Thomas thing just changed the genre. But your early album should be worth something. That's, That's the second album. That's what I'm album. saying. I mean, Jefferson. Uh, airplane it should, should still be, be worth valuable. more than Jefferson Starship because well, I would think of so. the early days. Yeah. No? yeah. I, would I would think, think so. so. And I they think played so. Woodstock and Monterey. Remember, they were the only yeah. band to play Woodstock, Monterey, and Altamont, the three big rock festivals. So, um, and do you know that when the Beatles played on the roof on uh, Let It Be? Yeah. Do you know where they got the idea? It must be Jefferson Airplane. Yeah. Beatles trivia. Did you know that? All right. I didn't know that. Okay. The Jefferson Airplane did Jean-Luc Godard had them on a roof and the Beatles loved it so you can yeah. look up Jean-Luc Godard and Jefferson Airplane you'll see it was the inspiration for the let it be wow. scene isn't that great that is great and you can see it on YouTube oh you've got to YouTube it because I think they do somebody to love and it's a psychedelic jam but, I'll find it but I, I got a question for you though on that on that uh, roof, rooftop concert was Billy Preston on the keyboard I think he was I think he was wasn't he it was very cold out yeah because the Beatles said that they could hardly play, it was so cold. Is that why, is that why John was wearing the, the fur jacket or whatever? Yeah, probably. Yeah. It was yeah. very cold out on the roof. Yeah. Uh, Billy Preston, I think, would be on it because he's on most of the record. I think so. And yeah. do you know where they found Billy Preston? Another trivia question you don't know. In 1966, they toured with my friend Bobby Hebb. They wanted Bobby to join and do, and do some of the things, like that Billy, he turned them on to Billy Preston. Really? So uh, Bobby Hebb did Sonny and toured with the Beatles, and he turned them on to Billy Preston. So it's all this great little trivia mm -hmm. that comes out years later. And uh, look what it did for Billy. And then he went to the Rolling Stones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what label did uh, Bobby record? Bobby recorded um, originally on Rich Records back in the day, and then FM Records. Then he had his first hit with David Baby Cortez, the song Rinky Dink. He's playing guitar. Mm -hmm. 1962, and then he gets signed to Phillips Mercury after he got his publishing deal. And they put out Sonny, and it became a worldwide sensation. Yeah. Then he went to Epic, and then we did an album. I wrote the liner notes. He did the album in 2003. He recorded it. It came out on Tuition Records Germany. So he had he had other other singles deals too, but he did three albums. But the mm -hmm. man recorded quite a bit. And to have a song that a thousand people have recorded and to only have three albums that came out. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of albums he recorded, and now I'm working with all those albums for the box set. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're working on the box set. We'll have it out by the end of the year. But um, it's, it's so much music. I could do 10 CDs, 20 CDs. We have so much that this man made. Mm -hmm. But we're making this the very best of Bobby Hebb. So all the fans that like Sonny... Sure. And a satisfied mind, love, 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 is four hits and a natural man. He wrote that Grammy winning tune, A Natural Man, for Lou Rawls. So he, you know, an amazing man, but they should have given him 30 album deals. Record yeah. industry is so weird. <laughs> um, but there's some Beatles trivia for you. I'm sure there's a lot more out there. Um, so much the Beatles is a soundtrack to our lives. So at the end of the show, Tom, we do a thing with Frank Delistrito in down in Texas, mm -hmm. and we talk about movies that and we play in Wind Camp. He is a buff for the 30s and the 40s, and especially one genre, which is what, horror movies? He's got two books out. One's on Bela Lugosi. He's working on it. I, had a, I was yeah. dumb enough to ask him a, 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 a question that was so Mickey Mouse for him. I, I it had, was great. It was the night before. I had just seen a Bela Lugosi movie, uh, The Black Cat, and it had the two big... Um, What's the other Lugosi and Karloff. Karloff. Karloff, yeah. And they were in the same movie at the same time, and I just happened to see it, so I thought I was going to stump him. Oh! I, uh, he, he was like, that is so elementary. He's one of the, he's one of the world experts. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the hilarious thing. And I had just happened to see it last night on TV. You know? <laughs> he's one of the experts. So I said, now, so who was up against Bella Lugosi? Now, I've seen, I've seen uh, in the bargain basement bins, so to speak, 
50 unforgettable horror films from the 30s, 20s, 30s, and 40s, and 50s for like 10 bucks. Wow. And it's in a it's in a case. It's all public domain. It's yeah, it's all public domain. And I that's what we play that. on Friday nights here on Wing Cam at nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. And anything else to say on that? Because we're going to call our movie expert. Oh, no, go ahead. Um, Tom Thornycraft, thank you for being part of this tonight. Yes, oh, thank well, you thank very you. Much. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for the invite. Jeannie's 